Glory Dome and all the locations of Dunamis this morning. Oh Lord, we make demands for that presence that will terminate afflictions. That presence that will terminate every infirmity be represented today. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, he sent forth his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh God, we, we make demands for the release of your word like never before. Father, let the word come with precision. Let the word come with accuracy. Let the word come with fire. We make demand that you put the word, put our word in the mouth of your servant as he stands to minister. Oh Lord, he shall speak and we shall receive from him. In the name of Jesus, we make demand, oh Lord, that as he stands to minister, he will minister with precision. He will minister with frequency, spiritual accuracy. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I found David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him. We demand for a flow of fresh oil upon God's servant this morning. Father, we make demands for a flow of fresh oil upon God's servant this morning. Let the oil be released upon him for my sake. Let the oil be released upon him for the sake of my generation. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are prayed. If you believe the Lord has heard us, put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Without a doubt, you came here with a testimony this morning. Please don't sit on it. A minister is by the glory gate waiting to have your testimony. And in due course, you will be called to the larger house to share. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus as we welcome the praise team to take us further. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands as we worship the Lord this morning. He deserves all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. It's celebration time. Anybody ready? Come on up. Is that the best you can? 
And have your seat in his presence. And let's begin to put our hands together as our brethren come out for their testimony this morning. It is our, bless, our testimony time and our blessing is connected to them in Jesus' name. Dr. Daniel, Excellence, as I call the name, please, let's keep giving the Lord a clap offering. Esther Sule, 
Sister Glory, Omotosho Ayomide, and Jesid Osuji from Germany. I take the names again. Please let's keep celebrating the mightiness of the Almighty in our midst. Dr. Daniel's Excellence, Esther Sule, Sister Glory, make the club better and better. Brother Motasho Ayomide, and our brother Jesid from Germany. Amen. Your name and straight to the point. Good morning, church. My name is Daniel Excellence Okwe. Uh, my testimony is going to be super summarized. I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord for divine direction and a miracle job. I was in Kaduna State working there. During the November convention, I got to know that I was supposed to come down to Abuja to do, do some here instead of in Kaduna. Because in an encounter, I saw both daddy and mommy on uh, different occasions. That, uh, mommy was teaching us in the Dusun class. So I told myself, when I get to residency in the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, I'll come down for the Dusun. But in another encounter of the night, I saw daddy. Daddy was holding something. He said I should come and collect. I was going towards him, but I was slow. He now said I should increase my speed. So when I woke up, I knew I needed to come down to Abuja immediately to do the Dusun. So I contacted somebody and I got an accommodation. I came down to Abuja and I, I enrolled in the Dusun program. So I applied to a, the, a private organization here in Abuja, which is one of the largest privately owned hospitals here. So I was waiting, waiting. I didn't hear anything. So on the 9th of February, just before the commanding the day, I just said, let me log into my email. I now saw that I should come the next day for an interview. So uh, I went for that interview. The HR, three HR of the hospital, they told me that they have been trying to call me, but my line was not connecting. Meanwhile, I was receiving calls from other people. Uh, so they said that they should forget about me, that I'm not in Nigeria. But the head of the HR team just said, let him send an email. That was how I didn't miss that interview. And I want to bless God because I got the job, even though I told them that I was doing do some, God still gave me favor, I got the job. I returned all glory to him. Uh, secondly, I want to bless the name of the Lord for my junior brother. He confided in me recently that he was addicted to sport betting. So I told him that he should connect to this commission, that God delivered me from that through using this commission. So he connected, and right now God in his mercy has delivered him. I also want to thank God because when I testified on 31st of March, how God provided for me supernaturally, he keyed into that testimony and the following Sunday, I was still in church. He sent me a text message how he also got miracle alas. I want to return all the glory to God. Then lastly, as a medical doctor, I had severe sepsis and malaria. I couldn't understand. I've never been sick like that in my life before. It was so severe that I was having both visual and auditory hallucination. I said, what is happening? The devil even whispered that you are going to die like that doctor that died from malaria. I told the devil, it's you that is going to die. So by the grace of God, I kept listening to daddy's message and I also co connecting to the commanding the day midnight prayer and God healed me. I, I've come to return all glory to God. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Esther Sule. God will change your story today in Jesus' name. Esther Sule, not me. Esther. Your name and straight to the point. My name is Sule Esther, and this is my mom. Praise the Lord. I want to give God all the glory for what he has done in my life. And um, I want to thank him for seeing me through school and also my service here. To the glory of the Lord, I'm the first graduate in my family. Hallelujah. And secondly, in October, I had a series of attacks during my service here. So um, the first thing is um, facial paralysis. So I came here on um, 31st of um, December, daddy prayed for someone with the same issue here, and I came to that. I went back, and during that facial paralysis, I went to the hospital because of these eyes. They said I had um, um, glaucoma. So before I came back here to Abuja again, I went for test, and before I even entered the test room, I prayed. After praying, I checked, I, I went to the test room, they checked, and the doctor said, what brought you here? I said, glaucoma. He said, you don't have it. Praise the Lord. And I went back. That's at first. After the crossover, I went back. 
And in February, Daddy said something during the commanding of the day. He said, during the commanding of the day, he said, your name starts with E, and you've been having series of attack, and you're currently serving. He prayed, and I keyed to those um, prayers. And to the glory of the Lord, within a short while, my face turned back normal. Because I could not eat, my face deviated from this side. My face was just like this. I could not eat, I could not drink anything. Hallelujah. And she's here to say thank she's you. She's trying to show us a picture of how it was. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Glory. Every attack of the enemy on your Glory. life and on your destiny, the attack is reversed. It's just, they're showing us a picture of how the face was. So you can see that what it is now is perfect. It's literally, literally normal. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Every satanic agenda on your life and on your body and on your system is reversed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your name is straight to the front. Above Oli, my name is Glory Ebudage. I'm here to thank God for what he has done in my life. Um, for the past years, I joined the church last year, uh, January. I um, got my foundation class March. I'm just one year and one month in the church. And what the Lord has not done in my year for the past years, God has done it this year. I'm here to glorify God and count my blessing. I'll be having this menstrual phase since I started seeing my period. I'm 29 years old. So during fasting on this year, January, I was praying to God that, you know, I'm fasting. I cannot be taking draw while fasting in this period. Please let my period come this month without pay. Then my period come that January without pay. Today is April. My period has stopped paining me. I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. And the second one, I'm here to thank God for removing the spirit of rejection from my life. I've been re receiving as in serious rejection anywhere I go, where I walk, wherever I am. But since I joined this church and commanded the day, the spirit of rejection has turned to favor in my life. I'm not taking it for granted. Then the third one that is very serious, all of them are testimony. But this one, I've been having this headache for the past six to seven years. Then whenever this headache comes, if I take drugs before I used to work, on small time, the drugs stop working. So wherever I, I have to return back home to sleep, if not, I'll start vomiting, I'll feel weak, then I'll not be able to do anything. This uh, month, 5th of April, I come back from work because of headache. I was praying and murmuring. I was complaining the same time, telling God, please just hear, hear me of this headache. Then Pastor now mentioned, there is somebody having left side of headache, the headache was even disturbing you while pray. I command that headache, check back to her. And that was during the commanding the day, midnight prayer. the day, midnight prayer. I have the declaration here. Then I slept and wake up. The headache is nowhere to be found. Till today and till forever. And normally what triggered the headache? Whenever I'm hungry, I feel headache. When I did not drink water, I feel headache. When I hear noise, I feel headache. When I did not sleep, well, I feel headache. But since that declaration is today, all those things have been cut on their body. Headache is nowhere to be found. I'm here to say thank you. And they cannot be found. Amen. Omotosho. Your name is straight to the front. My name is Omotosho Ayomide. Praise God. My testimony is this. On 29th of March, 2024, I had a dream that I was at home. Because then I was, I was out of job, some men drove a car into my compound and they called me and added the car key to me that I won a raffle draw. I was totally surprised because I am not a gambler. When I woke up, I wrote the dream down in my jota, people of God, to the glory of God. The dream I had two years ago came into fulfillment in my life last week and I, I am here to say, Thank you, Jesus. And what happened during the anointing service? Yes, last week Sunday, Daddy was declaring brutally that systems are putting are put under prayer and tension. That whatever is yours must release to you this week to the glory of God. I went with that word, and then to the glory of God, this is my testimony. And he said, when our Father and the Lord was making that declaration, he brought out his driver's license. And the key of his house, representing the car key, the driver's license represent, representing the car. He went to work the following day, and here is the car, the key of the car. The car is parked at the car park. 
the Lord answered his prayers and the word of the servant of God. The company he works in, they, they officially bought a car for him and gave to him. That's right. Very critical. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Upon Mount Zion there is deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Yours is entering your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Your name is straight to the point. Get your food. My name is Jesse. Um, I'm 21 years old from Germany and I came here by divine intervention to settle my faith in the Lord to know him more and to do the do some Bible school. I would like to start by thanking the Lord from the bottom of my heart for giving me this favor and grace to come to this wonderful and blessed country, Nigeria. I would also like to thank God and Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche and Dr. Mrs. Becky Enenche for making this possible and welcoming me so warmly and treating me so well and allowing me to be a part of Dunami School of Ministry Bible School. I would also like to thank Pastor Victor Agaba, the coordinator of Dusom, and Pastor Great for always having an open ear for me and taking good care of me. The first, the first testimony was on the day where the journey my trip to Nigeria started. The 18th of January 2024, God did a very mind-blowing miracle. Everything, everything was already arranged by God. My visa, my flight, my accommodation, and I was relaxed because I knew I just need to catch the flight, and that's it. So, when I arrived at the airport in Berlin, Germany, I went to the place where I can get my flight ticket and give out my luggage. I went there with the son of my father and the Lord. I started showing the requ requested document to the woman who was working for the airline when it was my turn. After she checked my document, she looked at me and said, you need a flight out from Nigeria because your maximum possible stay is six months. I was shocked because this was the first time for me hearing this and I didn't have a flight out because I don't know how long God wants me to stay. So I called my mother, told her and then my father in the Lord and told him and both of them were praying. I didn't know what to do and prayed shortly. I immediately, call, I immediately called one brother and said, you need to buy me a ticket because I didn't have enough money to buy it. And he agreed. But after the call ended, the son from my father and the Lord said, I'm going to get you this ticket. And I was very happy. So... We were searching for a flight back for around about six months later, but in my spirit I didn't feel peace. Just a few steps left to purchase the ticket after I found the right flight back. The woman looked again at me and said, you don't need to get a ticket. Just go and take your flight. Excuse me, I'd I like to make a better explanation here because of how fast he's reading it. He said he's from another denomination in Germany and decided to connect to our church, for our school of ministry, and to come here and be trained. When he, his visa and everything was ready, he got a flight, got to the airport, trying to get a flight to Abuja. And they told him, you need another flight out of Nigeria so in six tickets, months. Yes, you must go in and come in. Yes, sir. And he must do that within six months. Long yes. story made short, it was suspended. It was suspended. He, he didn't right. have it, and, and the Lord provided it for him. That's right, yeah. Second testament. The second one, a few weeks ago, I prayed Philippians 3.10 and that I get to know Jesus more and share in his suffering and the joy of his salvation and resurrection on the cross of Calvary. God answered my prayer just a few days later, praise the Lord. But what I saw a few days later while I was spending time with the Lord in my hotel was not pretty. When my eyes were closed, I saw Jesus being beaten with a whip twice. And the two times I flinched all over my body, which broke my heart and made me cry because he did that for me and so many people, which I didn't deserve. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace that I am saved and can have a relationship with you. Praise the Lord. The last one, God used his servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche, to deliver me from every demon and to break every yoke upon my life, which includes pornography, masturbation, immorality, spiritual wife, drugs, cigarettes, womanizing, and any addiction. Since that very day, he prayed for me more than two months ago. I never masturbated, watched pornography, or did something that is ungodly. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Can you stand on your feet and let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is talking of spiritual wives. See, 
The devil is no respecter of person or tribe or color or ethnicity or anything. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows and I am free. I got my poor hallelujah. I got my power hallelujah. Because of Jesus every day I shall arrive. Double the double the heavenly blessings. Celebrate. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Walk to two more people and tell them, today you shall have a divine visitation. Today you shall have a divine visitation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him another clap and a shout of praise and you may be comfortably seated. I hope those of you watching online also said all those things to somebody beside you. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome our online viewers today, and I want to welcome everyone that is here in this service this morning. I know that God is set for your lifting in the name of Jesus. And once again, I want to say thank you for all your warm greetings to um, God's servant and myself this week as we celebrated 30 years marriage anniversary. Praise the Lord. Uh, if we didn't reply your messages, kindly bear with us. Just help me give yourself a reply. Say, thank you very much. We appreciate these kind words. That's the reply. We've received it now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll be going through our seeds of destiny this morning. And uh, God's servant has written very, very um, um, concisely and explicitly on the issue of love. The issue of... Um, kindness to one another and the key and the topic today is a key to fruitful giving scripture says in first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 3 says and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burnt and have not charity it profited me nothing thought for the day your giving holds no value without love your giving attracts no profit without love. Now, our anchor scripture reveals that a major consequence of lovelessness is ineffectiveness of the giving covenant. The scripture makes it very clear that every sower must reap, and a sower can never be a beggar. Somebody say, I hear. So if you are a giver, you are a sower, you are not supposed to be begging and borrowing because the covenant works without contention. But unfortunately, sometimes you discover that people are giving and they are not seeing results. Why? Giving normally provokes receiving. You see that in Genesis 8, 22, seed time and harvest, summer and winter and all that. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, Luke 6, 38 and Acts 20, 35. Please take note of these scriptures and go do a little study when you get back home today. However, it's very important to note that giving would not provide corresponding harvest where there is no love. 1 Corinthians 13.3 says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not love, 
it profited me nothing. This implies that even if you empty your bank account for the sake of God and his kingdom and give all the money that you have to the point of even giving your body to be burnt, but you have no love, it profits you nothing. Your giving holds no value without love. Your giving attracts no profit without love. This is a serious matter. Tell your neighbor, this is a serious matter. So you might be a tither, you might be a giver, you might be a covenant practitioner, but if you have a problem with your spouse, such a big quarrel and a big problem that nobody can resolve it, it profits you what? Nothing. You may only waste your time and resources. You may be a foundation member of a church to the point that you even, uh, even when that church was building, you gave half of the money for the project and you are keeping malice with somebody and fighting and quarreling with people. You have no profits from that giving. There are people who make the practice of malice just the way people practice law. <laughs> Many people enjoy malice practice the way lawyers practice law. They can be called malice practitioners, just as we have legal practitioners. I hope there is no malice practitioner here. We only want to have legal practitioners and medical practitioners and architectural practitioners and tailoring practitioners, but not malice practitioners. Such people enjoy a lifestyle of keeping malice. They live by it. They enjoy it. They can walk past the person and refuse to answer the person's greeting and refuse to greet the person. Please, beloved, refuse to be one of them because that is a fruitless and a wasteful lifestyle. Remember this, your giving holds no value without love. Your giving attracts no profit without love. What's our assignment today? Number one, make love a major priority of your life. Learn to forgive. Learn to forget easily. Learn to be kind-hearted. Learn to love your neighbors. Learn to love your brothers and sisters in church. Don't size up somebody and judge him and then act based on your wrong judgments. Number two, let your sacrifices and your giving be powered and propelled by love. Not by contention, not by competition, not by jealousy, not by envy, not by bitterness. And I see Jehovah lifting you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands. Let's pray together this morning. Say after me, Lord, I ask that you deliver me from loveless sacrifice and loveless giving. Plant your love in my heart and let it be the basis of my giving. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. We're going to proceed right away. We'll be receiving the ministry of Dunamis Voice. And they'll be ministering a medley of songs. These are all songs received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. I believe that as a singer and minister, you will be blessed. Let's receive them with a clap offering this morning.
Not lay your hands Not lay your hands upon my life It's enough It's enough Lord, I'm in need of your hands on me Go ahead, open your mouth and just go on me today. Lord, lay your hand upon my life. It's enough. Oh, Lord. Lord, I'm in need of your hands on me today. Lord, lay your hands upon my life. It's enough. your hands and just begin to talk to him. Lay your hands upon my life today. It's enough, it's enough, Lord. Lord, I'm in need of your hands and me today. Father, we give you the worship. Breathe upon this service today. Let not one person live here the same way they have come. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. A bigger, bigger, bigger clap and a lot of shout of praise. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of praise. Rejoice and be glad in today. Could you help me walk to seven people and tell them, Congratulations for a great new day? Congratulations for a great new day. Shake their hands. Shout out victory. It's a great, great thing. Great thing. How wonderful and beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The Bible says it's like the precious ointment that flowed from the head of Aaron. 
Today, there shall be the flow of a fresh anointing in Jesus' precious name. Welcome to this very exciting impartation service today. I believe that God will do something new in your life. Subject this morning is accessing the treasures of the world. Accessing the treasures of the world. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 3. Speaking concerning Jesus. The Bible says in him are hid. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus Christ is hid. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The, 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 the word was with God. The word was God. So if you look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 again with that mentality, in the word I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Our objective this morning is to understand what it entails to access both the treasures and the wonders in the word. It is confirmed from scripture that the word of God it's a minefield of treasures. A minefield of treasures. This book. It has affected lives, affected destinies. The treasures of spiritual intensity. The treasure. Of divine health and wholeness. The treasure of strength. The treasure of supernatural supply. The treasure of leadership skill. It was Abraham Lincoln who said that nobody can be president and rule or lead well without a copy of this Bible. Inside this world are he. Treasures. In Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 44. Matthew 13 and in verse 44. The Bible said again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. The which a man had found he hid it. And for joy thereof go it and sell it all that he had. And buy it that field. It's like a treasure hid in a field. So most times the treasure here is literally hid. It's hid. You don't step into it and just access it directly. It's concealed. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 11 to 12. Look at what it said. It is 11 to 12, is that right? Somebody say loud, amen. No wonder the Bible says we should not cast the swine before the pearl. Isaiah 29, 11 to 12. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. The word of a book that is sealed. Which meant the vision of all, the vision, the word, the revelation of God's word is like the words of a book that is sealed. 
And they deliver to someone that is learned saying, read this. And he said, no, you went too fast. Read this. And he said, I cannot for it is sealed. And they deliver it to someone who is unlearned, like an unbeliever, saying, read this. And he prayed, I can't for I am unlearned. So it is a book that is sealed. The Bible says, it is the glory of kings to conceal a matter. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. But the honor of glory of God to conceal a thing, but is the honor of kings to search it out, to search the matter. So it's concealed. That is why when you pick the Bible, there are things inside, but you may not see it. Most times during the course of a preaching, you hear someone say, Oh, and this is in the Bible. And this is in the Bible. And beloved brothers and sisters, it is possible that you have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But suddenly a passage of scripture is brought out and you say, I never saw that one before. And I can tell you, there are people who have been reading the Bible since you and me were born or before. Who will see a fresh passage that they have never seen before. They read it, but they never saw it. It's one thing to read it, another thing to see it. So what do I do so that the concealed book can be opened? What do I do to unveil the, 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 the content of the book? Because your, your healing is there, your deliverance is there, your peace of mind is there, your life is there, your supply is there, your victory above witchcraft is there. Accessing the treasures of the world, what are the avenues? Number one, is through hunger. Through hunger. Spiritual hunger. Through spiritual hunger. Psalm 81 and in verse 10, he said, Open your mouth, I am the Lord your God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth. Demonstrate hunger. Confirm that you are desperate and I will feel you. Hosea chapter 6 and in verse 3 the Bible said then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. It is those who follow to know that know. It is those who press to know that know. Insight belongs to interest. Until you are interested, you are not insightful. Knowledge follows hunger. The knowledge of God, the knowledge of his word. In Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 6, Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 6. Matthew, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 10, he said, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Beloved brothers and sisters, feeling belongs to the hungry. It belongs to the hungry. Children that demonstrate hunger are fed. Those who don't demonstrate hunger at times, they are forced to be fed. Just try to force them to feed them. But in the spiritual realm, nobody will force you to feed you. 
In 2 Kings chapter 4 and in verse 3 and in verse 4, when, G when Elisha told the woman, he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy son, sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. God does not waste his time with anyone that is full. Whoever is full is set aside. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. There are many people who have demonstrated that they are full. They are not in need of anything, so God sets them aside. <laughs> Thou shalt set aside. You know the reason why creation happened? Because the earth was without form and void. It was empty. It was hungry. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Somebody say, Amen. My growing up spiritually is a journey of hunger. Desperate hunger. Till today, till tomorrow, the hunger is intense. Go, still going through scriptures. Still going through preached messages. When T.L. Osborne came out of India like a frustrated, failed evangelist, missionary, he locked up himself for about a month, went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about three times in one month. By the time he was through with the exercise, he got a revelation of Jesus that changed his life. Hunger. Many of us are too casual with the book. We, we have a newspaper, a literature approach to the book. No. That is not how to do it. Nobody ever got delivered reading the newspaper. Nobody ever got saved or changed reading the textbook of school. But demons scream out when you encounter some things in this book. So we approach it separately. True spiritual hunger. You can access. Come before God and let him know. God servant Pablo Yedipo said, Lord, show me the secret of supernatural supply, kingdom prosperity. Locked up himself. Went through books and went through the Bible. Before three days were over, he got light that he has not recovered from. To the pain of hell, he hasn't recovered from. True spiritual hunger. Number two, is true uprightness of life. In bracket, you can call it the fear of the law. True uprightness of life. Through the fear of the Lord. You can have the passcode into the treasures of the world. Psalm 25 and in verse 12. He said, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. What man is he that feareth the law? You want to be qualified for his teaching, you must be armed with his fear. If you want to be qualified for his teaching, you must be armed with his fear. And the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Proverbs 8.13 If you want to be qualified for his teaching, you must be armed with his fear. Proverbs chapter 25 and in verse 14. Proverbs 25 and in verse 14. The Bible said, Sorry, Psalm 25.14. Continuing from Psalm 25.12. Psalm 25, 14. He said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. New Testament is new covenant. Old Testament is old covenant. The secret of the Lord is not with those who are reckless. The secret of the Lord is not with drunkards, 
It's not with prostitutes. It's not with gamblers. It's not with masturbators. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Hallelujah. You want God to show you things. Listen. Consecration is doorway to revelation. Consecration. Separation from things. Separation from things. Consecration is doorway to revelation. The higher your level of consecration, the higher your access, the deeper your access to revelation. The higher your level of consecration, the deeper your access to revelation. What man is he that feareth the Lord? He will show him the way that he shall choose. True up, uprightness of life. Unrighteousness, ungodliness, sinfulness, iniquity. They block revelation pathways. Anybody knows about chemistry and physiology and pharmacology and all those things where you, where you talk about pathways. They block revelation pathways. They block the pathways of revelation. When you, when you live anyhow you want, you talk anyhow you want, you move with anybody you want. They block your pathways of revelation. Pathways of light. Pathways of insight. No wonder I said in the book of James chapter 1 and in verse 21. James chapter 1 and in verse 21. It said, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. So you can receive with meekness. The engrafted wall, which is able to save your soul. So put aside filthiness. Put aside ungodliness, unholiness. And then when you do that, you can have access to the word that is able to save your soul. Somebody say amen. So how do I decode the word? How do I access the treasures in the world? How do I study the word and get what is in the word? True spiritual hunger. True uprightness of life. Which implies the fear of the Lord. Number three, through the art of meditation. The art of meditation. Meditation is more like digestion. It's more like regurgitation of the word. Joshua chapter 1 and in verse 8, the Bible said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. Psalm 1 verse 1 all the way to verse 3. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law that he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. In his law does he meditate. Now look at this in First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 15. First Timothy 4, 15. He said meditate upon these things. Upon God's word, upon what God has done in your life, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditation is door to profit. Say it the other way. Profit is a product of meditation. That thy profit may appear to all. Give yourself wholly to these things. Meditate on them that thy profit may appear unto all. You profit from the word that you are ready to meditate on. Let me say some general things 
before. Meditation is the post process of putting pressure. Putting pressure on a subject matter. You are putting pressure on the subject. Pressure of thought. And understand that pressure is the way to treasure. If there will be any treasure, it answers to pressure. Pressure is put on the earth. And the crude oil comes out. And the gold comes out. Another way to say it is pressure is the way to the precious. If you are going to get the precious, you will put the pressure. Meditation is going deeper. Please understand. That nothing precious is found on the surface. When you, when you, con, when you function with a superficial approach to life, you never get anything that is precious. The only kind of fishes you will find on the surface of the water are tadpoles, fingerlings. In case you want to locate the shark, you fish. You can't even fish in shallow waters. You can't even fish in any of our rivers to find the shark. Go to the sea, go to the ocean. Am I communicating? That is how everything in life is. Many of us are too much in a hurry with the word to get light. We fish, we fish in shallow waters. We fish in superficial terrain. You are, you, are, you, are, you are trying to study the word and meditate and you are looking at your time. The phone is ringing all at the same time. Text messages are being answered at the same time. You get nothing. There is a time to put the phone away for one hour or more. You put it on silence so that you can look at the calls that came while it was silent. And you may respond to those that you think you need to respond to. Or you can switch it off completely. While you are exploring the world, while you are plowing the depths of the world, listen, whenever the student is ready, the teacher knows. God knows when the, his children are ready for light. When, if you are ready to be taught, God is aware. And if you, are, if, you, if you have so many things in your life that are your concern and your distraction, God is also aware. And God will not waste insight where there is no interest. Somebody say loud, amen. Somebody say loud, amen. These things are not magic. They happen. They, they don't happen magically. They, ha they happen. They happen. You have to be deliberate in order to see certain light. You have to be deliberate. Through the art of meditation, you can access the treasures of the world. If anybody is getting anything, say a loud amen. You are getting something here today, say a loud amen. So through spiritual hunger, you will get access to light. Number two, through uprightness of life, implying the fear of the Lord, you get access to light. Number three, through the act of meditation, the art, rather not, not act, art, it's an art, like, 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 a, like a practice. Not just one action. Not just an act. The art. The lifestyle. Through the art of meditation, you can get insight to light. Number four, through prayer in the spirit. Prayer in the spirit. 
In fact, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Qualify it as through the ministry of the Spirit. Because in the ministry of the Spirit, prayer, prayer in the Spirit is involved. And asking the Holy Spirit for light is involved. In John chapter 16 and in verse 13, John 16, 13, the Bible said, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will guide you into truth. What is truth? The word. John 17, 17 B. Thy word is truth. 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 So the Holy Spirit guides you into the center of the world. When he, the Holy Spirit is come, he shall guide you, he shall usher you, he shall step you into the center of truth. 17, 17b, because his word is truth. Somebody say loud, amen. John chapter 14 and in verse 26, in John 14 and in verse 26, he said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So he's a teacher. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. This is very, very important. This Here just now. He shall teach you all things. So we have two functions of the Holy Spirit here. Number one, while you open the scripture, it gives you insight. It gives you light. He shall teach you all things. Number two, while you are studying this particular passage, he connects you with relevant passages that are relevant, but re relevant and related passages. He says he shall bring to your remembrance all things. Scriptures you read before that did not make meaning. He begins to connect it with the one you are reading now. And when you connect scripture with scripture, it's an explosion. Am I communicating? It's like connecting wire with wire. It's an explosion. It shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance things I said before. That verse, when you read it on its own, it didn't make sense. But now the Holy Ghost is connecting it with this current verse. It explodes. That was why I said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, all the way to verse 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah. The deep things of God. The spirit of God is searching. And searching. And searching. And searching the things. That are deep. And the things that you need to understand. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. <laughs> By the agency of the Holy Spirit, you can see more. Listen, if you understand how to pray in the Holy Spirit, can I ask you one simple question? In the New Testament, apart from our master Jesus Christ, who do you think had more revelation? I think the answer is clear, right? Than any other person in, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Who is that? Who wrote more books than every other person? Now, if you divide the New Testament into two, Paul wrote half. Start from 
Acts of the Apostles. Actually, some people think that Luke, because it's the same person who wrote Luke, is the one who wrote Acts, wrote it uh, a transcriber, as it were. All the way to Hebrews. Do you see his secret? 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. Look at what he said. I thank God I speak with tongues. All of you gather your tongues together. My own pass. Your tongue, your tongue, your tongue, your tongue. All of you eyes. So he spoke in tongues and swimmed in light. Or swam in light. Mm. Why is that so? Because the frequency of the spirit is the frequency of mysteries. Hidden secrets. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 is the frequency of mysteries. He said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. And I have, my wife is aware of this that every time a scripture becomes naughty, that is not naughty like a naughty boy, but naughty like a knot. K N O W T Y. You can unknot it. Lord, what are you saying here? I need understanding. You break it into atoms, molecules, and pieces it into electrons. <laughs> Challenge you that we are too much in a hurry. We don't want to wait to, to see any end result. Eh? Fast food, fast scripture, fast revelation. You break it, you dissolve it, you dissolve it, you decimate it. Just you just dissolve it and disintegrate it. All of a sudden, the whole thing is just open. Lord, what are you saying here? pepe rota if nothing comes out immediately, you return back to it. You move, you return back to it. Or you move, you return. It must. I, somebody can somebody just go ahead and just blast in tongues for just 30 seconds. Lakete pepora natana galaya tafenisto. Let a fret a seed a kalate. If you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with tongues, let this be your opportunity. Let us perotas, keke birota, sinagalatis, jeretesi frete sananahu, jola trete senina la haradasa, yakasete frete zino galite fritasati, yoratemi talafedo kotarina talabaras. Yorotanite frete keke dio torono kosapari yala tesere tero tasira yata sata la yaho satina magaya la huratish. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the honor in Jesus' name. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. You see, whenever you preach what you have proved, it gives people proofs. Go on ahead and prove what you have just heard. Praying in the Holy Ghost, asking the Holy Ghost to show you what God is saying because nobody knows the subject like the author. And the Holy Ghost is the author of the scripture. All scripture are breathed by the Spirit of God. He authored it, so he knows the subject very well. What did you mean, Holy Spirit, when this was being written? What was on your mind? What are you saying? And it dissolves into atoms, molecules, electrons, protons, neutrons, even the intramolecular forces and energy. Hallelujah. Finally, for this morning, number one, we are dealing with how do I access the treasures of the world through spiritual hunger, number two, and these are practical things, through uprightness of life, the fear of the Lord, number three, through the art of meditation, number four, through the ministry of the spirit and number five through the climate of joy and praise joy and praise 
Isaiah chapter 12 and in verse 3, he said, Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. With joy you draw water out of the wells of salvation. With joy you draw water out of the well of salvation. The well of salvation, the wells of the word. The wells of the word. Acts chapter 13 and in verse 1 to verse 2, the Bible said now, there was in the church, where in the church at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manain, which had been brought up with, with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Separate me, separate me. While they fasted, while they ministered, ministered to the Lord means worship. They sang praises. Then the voice of the Lord. See, the voice of the Lord will come with the songs of worship, with the songs of praise, with the climate of joy. Whether it's the voice of the Lord out of this scripture or whether it's the voice of the Lord that comes from the spirit, the voice of the Lord will come. You shall have the song. Isaiah 30, 29. And the Lord will cause his voice to be heard. Isaiah 30, 29. And then verse 30, you shall have the song. And then if you go to verse 30, and the Lord shall cause his voice to be heard. You shall have a song, and the Lord shall cause his voice to be heard. The same person that we, saw, we talked about just now, Paul the Apostle, who was the most lighted in this New Testament, was also the most excited. Because you know of people from their words. Look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Always. He's talking from his experience. If you need to know the secret of my life or the secret of my light, this is one of it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Don't let anything put your joy under pressure. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say to you, rejoice. Don't let anything put your joy under pressure. Look at Paul again speaking. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, all the way to verse 20, he said... And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say aloud, Amen. I say this and I round off excited okay to be lighted you must be excited if you want to be lighted you must be excited excited people are lighted people even in the world today when light is off children cry running up and down. When light arrives, I'm talking to those of us in this part of the world, those who, don't, who live where they don't take light, you don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Children begin to, they begin to scream, yay! In those days, up neighbor. As you have tried for us, which is something that is your normal duty anyway. Excited people are lighted people. Listen, darkness is a companion of depression. How many of us know that depressed people thrive in darkness? They don't want light. They deliberately create darkness. When they wake up in the morning, they don't want to go out. They remain in the room. It's a symptom of depression. For as long as you agree to be depressed, you are excused from illumination, from inspiration, from revelation. Whatever happens, never allow the devil. You see, some of us, when you see us move, dance, move, and do all the things, you you, you have zero clue. My phone is... Somebody was calling me around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. 
<laughs> that is, you shouldn't sleep. On a Saturday, I mean, a night across Sunday morning. Hello? After midnight prayer yesterday, people were waiting outside there for prayer. Oh, yes? Hola, hola. You don't understand, you don't understand what I'm talking They were waiting outside there at the car park there for prayer. After the midnight prayer. There are test messages of problem of people you see. You, you are not the one who is in the problem. You won't be able to sleep. But in the middle of that, you see, anything that attacks your joy attacks your light. Anything that attacks your joy attacks your faith. Anything that attacks your joy attacks your strength. For the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. So you do everything you can to protect your joy. The devil is angry if you are happy. Don't, don't forget that for life. For some, for some people sitting there, the reason why the devil is on your case is because they don't see you depressed. Nothing makes you angry. You are dancing and happening all the time. What, what can we do to this woman, to this girl? She's not married yet. She's not depressed. She's still, she's still happy. She's still dressing fine. But to hell with that devil. In a short while from now, what they think you don't have, you shall celebrate it. If you're saying amen, stand on your feet with a louder shout of amen. If you're saying amen, shout the louder say Amen. Remain standing. I want you to know that joy is not a gift. It is a choice. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say unto you, rejoice. It didn't say if you feel like rejoicing, rejoice. Rejoice. I like you to rejoice until you run the devil crazy. I like you to rejoice until you run them mad. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say it. Say, Even if the fig tree fails to blossom and there is no fruit in the vine, even the labor of the olive perish, if things are not working as I wanted, there is no, the flock shall, is cut off from the fold. There is no head in the stores. Look at what it says, verse 18. Yet. Somebody say yet. Yes. Somebody shout yet. Yes. You know, I, you know I, I preached a message some time ago and it's titled yet. The, mer the, the testimony I'm expecting has not come yet. The relationship I was in decided not to work Yet. My medical report, the devil is lying against himself. Yet. I did a job. They have not paid me my money. Yet. My house rent is trying to expire and I don't know where the money is coming from. Yet. Somebody shout yet. yet. I will rejoice. I stand, I take authority over every spirit of depression, over every climate of depression, over every demon of depression, every demon of heaviness. I arrest you. Go to hell. You know, I told you before, anything the devil wants you to do, do the opposite. If he wants you to sit down, stand. If he wants you to cry, laugh. 
If he wants you to be inactive, stand up and be active. If he wants you to, if he, if he wants you, if he wants you to remain in the room in depression, dress up, stand up, step out, show up. Hey! Stand up, dress up, step out, show up. See, see me. Come on. I am here. I day. Devil run mad, I day. Demons run mad, I day. Wizards and witches run mad, I day. Give the Lord a clap, a shout, a leap of joy. We're going to proceed into its five minutes explosive praise to clear up any climate around your life that has blocked your light, to introduce back the frequencies and the highways of light and insight. But my counsel is, it is wisdom to apply one's life to that which is profitable. Wisdom is profitable. Ecclesiastes, I believe, chapter 10, verse 10. It is wisdom to apply one's life to that which is profitable. To get the profit of the word. We just saw what to do. All you need now. Is apply your life. To that. Which is profitable. So we can see the best of life. It's a new day. It's a new day for somebody. The grace. To do all the things you have been told. That grace is released upon you now. Is somebody about to celebrate God for at least five minutes? And go to, you are going to celebrate the king. There are five more points that we have. And I can't say all of them in this service because of the time we have. So I'll plead that you take the second service message so you can make the whole. I can't even go through it briefly because of time still. But the second service will, 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 will have a second five points that will make ten points altogether. What we need to do to access the world. Please pick it up so that you can be totally benefited. It can be totally beneficial to you. Somebody say one. One of the things I'm going to say in the, in the second service is called humility. Humility is very, very important in access to light. Arrogant people never see anything out of the world. I'll talk about that in detail in the second service. And I'd like you to go through that. Stand up on your feet and let's give the Lord a praise. Five minutes, explosive, exciting, brutal, celebrate your praise. Walk to seven people. Tell them I want to praise God. I want to praise God. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to praise God. Let's go. You are highly lifted up, Lord. You are highly lifted up, Lord. You are glorious in holiness. You are faithful, Lord, in praise. You do great and mighty things. I want, I want, I want. You are high.
your hands now and receive a visitation very very drastic prophetic word lift your hands Psalm 104 verse 30 lift your hands thou sendest forth thy spirit they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Can you imagine that? God renews the face of the earth by sending out his spirit to cause creation. We thought that creation only happened once. Creation is ongoing. Thou sendest out thy spirit and they are created so that the face of the earth can be renewed. Dig a pit in the midst of nowhere. No tree, no grass, nothing. Come out, come there very soon. you see life inside it. Ram the earth with compactors until the earth is as concrete as concrete floor. Suddenly grass starts growing out of it. Thou sendest out thy spirit and on a continuous basis you renew the face of the earth by creation. What does that mean to you? I'd like you to know this prophetic word. Under seven days something shall be created in your life. The position that Joseph occupied in Egypt did not exist before. It was created. He was the first one on that seat. After him, I'm not sure if there was another. It was created for him. Under seven days, there is someone here. Something shall be created. A miracle shall be created. A manifestation shall be created. A result shall happen. And even for those who had long-standing expectations, the expectations shall become manifestations. Lift up your two hands. Cause thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast cre created all things, and for thy pleasures we are ever the Lord, O oh Lord, thou art worthy, O Lord, worthy, O Lord, to receive, to receive glory, glory, honor, and power, and power, and power for thou hast been, O oh, Lift your hands everywhere you are.
a new day. Lift your hands. Something created, delayed manifestation, delayed expectation, and above all, under seven days, Jehovah God will do a new thing in your life. Something new, and it is starting even from here. It is starting from here, even before today expires. That pin prick and pin like sensation on the tip of the right breast. If it is an arrow, it is retrieved and refired back. You came in here with that sensation. Whether it already has a lump or has a swelling or a growth, returns back. That lower back condition. That spirit husband and spirit wife attack. Masquerade devil. Spirit of infirmity. Spirit of the dead. They return back to hell now. <laughs> Lift your hands. And when I say in the name of Jesus, you scream, I receive. You receive your deliverance. You receive that new thing that Jehovah wants to do in your life within the next seven days. That new thing. That creation. Hosadi. <laughs> Lift your hands high, Father. Let it be, Father. Let it be, Father. Let it be. Release it for your son, release it for your daughter. At the count of seven, receive it. Wow, seven. All right, lift your hands at the count of seven. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I receive, 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 receive. Receive his visitation. Receive his visitation. Receive his visitation. Let us set a fit to Santa by a light and a banana. You wrote it via Tani Beliacona. Let the friend of Santa Galala. Yata Santa Tana. Laya Tasetepino Gobala. Let Pepper and Galala. Let us set a fetus in a Let us set a fetus in a Receive it! Receive it! Receive it! In Jesus. Precious name. 
it is done. Amen. Lift your hands and give him the praise, give him the honor, give him the adoration, give him the worship. Give him the worship, the adoration, the supremacy, dominion, and rule, sovereignty. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Give him a, a, a 30 seconds shout of victory. One, two, go. Hallelujah. Woo! Celebrate. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hallelujah, he Hallelujah for Somebody celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty. While we are doing this, something happened to you briefly and you want us to know. Quickly step to the frontier. That symptom I mentioned on that right breast or whatever it is or an encounter. Don't, don't sit down yet to we'll celebrate one minute and then you sit down. Let us rejoice and be glad. Giving the glory to God. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And the bride has made us. Everybody sing. Let us rejoice and be glad. Giving the glory to God. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Everybody, body, 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 body. The Almighty. Hallelujah for the Lord. Everybody sing Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Everybody, body, 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 sing Hallelujah. You are crowned King of Africa. You are crowned Lord of Lords. You are crowned King of Africa. Who can deny you? Are Master of the universe, conquer all the king. Hey, master of the universe, emperor, emperor. Hey. You are the king over principality. You are the head over power. You are, you are, you are the head. Say God is winning and the enemy is losing. Give me a big clap of hand and a shout of praise. Take your seat. What's happening here? The spirit of masturbation just checked out of him now. Oh, wow. Totally free. 
Wow, like, come like forward it. here. Lift up your hands. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Jesse is producing more testimonies right now. In the name of Jesus. Complete freedom, yes. So I look at this man's leg. For nine years. Oh my God. That satanic affliction on the leg. He said in the service this morning, the power of God came on him. The pain disappeared. He couldn't walk. He used to walk like this. He said he couldn't stand. Show us how you used to walk. How you used to walk. Show us how you used to walk. The camera should show it appropriately. How you used to walk. You used to draw your leg. Show us how you can walk now. He told me he can run. Are you just oh my god? Hey! Hey! He's dancing. Doing what he couldn't do before. Lift up your hands. Next Sunday we see you with the totally dryness of the wound. Power of the Holy Ghost. Guess what happened? That this gentleman, the word you declared about the pain around the nipple area with wow. the growth wow. was his case. He said his wife had even checked it for him before. Wow. So this morning, the pain is gone, the growth is gone. On the totally nipple area. Incredible. And it's a man. Congratulations. And I mentioned something last night at the command of the midnight prayer about a man with a breast affliction. I don't know if it's another person. Father, thank you. Jesus' precious name. He is free completely. Yes, let's go. This sister came running out. She said she had a demonic dream where they were taking something out of her, her, her abdomen. She woke up this morning with excruciating pains, very severe pains, Plus the depression that came with that um, demonic thing. She said, tell us what she said. And so what happened? The power of God came. Yes, when daddy said we should pray, we should five minutes prayer. And I entered the prayer, begin to kabash. Before I know, everything vanished. Ah! Hallelujah, give the Lord a praise. From the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom suffered violence and the violence taken it by force. That is how to be quarrelsome in the spirit. As I said, three weeks ago, somebody sucked her left breast in the dream. Bastard devil. And she came down with hot sensation and pain. Bastard because devil. As you, you declared prayers right now, she felt cold sensation on that left. Lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus, every arrow from hell, return back to that hell in the name of Jesus. Yes. Brother said he's been tormented and molested by a spirit wife for the past 15 years. 15? 15 years. At the shout of I receive and fire, he said he saw a personality in dark robes walk out of him. Incredible. Congratulations. Spirit wife need a husband to go and marry a demon. Lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus, receive your total freedom. Yes. She said she's had that terrible right breast condition, as was mentioned, had lasted a couple of days. She can't sleep at night. She can't sleep at can't night. Can't sleep at night. That devil is a liar. He couldn't last night. Couldn't sleep because of that pain. But pain is checked back to hell. Congratulations, little hand. Every arrow of death fired into anybody here. I declare the arrow returns back to hell. Shout the Lord, say Amen. Yes. Two things happened to our sister this morning. She said she had she had always been molested by a spirit husband. But when you asked us to place our hands on her head. That spirit husband caught fire and ran out. That's right. And another woman that kept blocking her anytime she sees you in the dream of fire and she wants to come to you for prayer, the old man will say, where are you going to? The same old woman caught fire and ran away from Somebody her. Somebody lift your right hand and say, every stranger around my life, you are set on fire. Now, shout the Lord and say amen. So, th this sister came in here. Oh, 
yes, with the pain in the breast, as you declared. She had done night vigils for like two or three consecutive nights, but she came in this morning, the it's pain right. disappeared. Can you have testimony we'll take in the next service? Our time is up. But somebody can interview them, yes. The, the pain is gone, sir. Give the Lord a praise. Power of the Holy Ghost, be free. Right hip condition healed. Right hip yes, sir. for her. Yes, sir. Okay, you, you came because of your husband who is in the hospital. But your own hip is now healed. All right, calm down. Just calm down. God healed you as a sign for him. All right, calm down. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed. And this is permanent. In Jesus' name. Yes. So our brother said, He's healed right there. He was working with some white men on road construction. He's a, a road construction technician. And he was doing well, making money. Suddenly he deviated and went into mining. And went and got a mining field. And went into terrible debt. He went into debt, depression, and has been so sad. He said he just remembered Dunamis and decided to walk in here today. As you were preaching, suddenly joy filled his heart. Depression disappeared. Congratulations. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Your change of story is here in Jesus' name. She's also coming in with depression. She had this internal heat condition. She couldn't sleep. She said she would pour three buckets of water, cold water on herself in the night for the past one month. She came in this morning. She said when the month ends and she has money, she will go to the hospital. And then when she came in today, as you are preaching, she received the word for joy. And she started dancing on her seat. That's how the heat condition left her. It is over for her. Sir, here we have waist, lower waist uh, pain gone. All kinds of demonic afflictions disappear, and all of them are healed. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Your testimonies are permanent in Jesus' name. Celebrations. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. 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 Jesus celebrates. But, but, but in case you want to give us a new song, we are okay. Jesus celebrates. Celebrate. Everybody, body, 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 sing. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He's risen, yeah. he's risen. He's risen, he's risen. He's risen. He's risen. the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise in Jesus precious name amen somebody say louder amen, amen. somebody shout the Lord most amen. amen very quickly all, all regular activities are on commanding the day midnight tonight is uprooting evil plantings anything the devil planted including human beings that are agents of the devil around your life we are trusting the Lord for their uproot, uproot for God to uproot them around our lives and destinies tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, it's holding from 11.30 just like usual. We reviewed the time yesterday and it was... How many of you enjoyed the time of last night? It gave you enough time to sleep and wake up for service. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. The healing and deliverance service of Tuesday, explosive time, Wednesday midweek service. We'll be rounding off in the subject of the word. And Friday is our worship and wonders night. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Commanding the day midnight prayer shall be happening within the worship and the wonders night is titled at thy war. It is breakthrough by the world. What happened to Peter when he toiled all night and caught nothing? Invite your friends and your loved ones. Special command the day midnight prayer edition shall be holding within the, the video. And all those who are saying, I want to come for commanding the day midnight prayer physically. You have the opportunity to be here physically by that Friday night. It's going to be very, very explosive. And the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Home church evangelism in the morning. And then home church in the evening. Coming Sunday testimonies and Thanksgiving service. is going to be a most explosive time. Ethiopia slash Kenya crusade warming up very aggressively. Online foundation class portal is still open. And ensure that you register. The Lord bless you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you in Jesus name. Very quickly. 
If you are a member of the home cell, can you wave your hand and let's see. God bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine on you and fulfill his purpose in your life in Jesus' name. If you are not yet a member of the house fellowship, can you wave your hand and let us identify you so we can give you a slip so that you can be planted in the house fellowship? Yes, the, the, the ushers will give you a slip, fill in your names, fill in your house area address, and then our, our home church desk outside will receive it from you. That's right there. And then they will place you in the, in the house where you belong. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. If you want to make your home available, can you also make your home? Let's see your hand. How many of us have our homes as home cell locations? Let's see your hands. Excellent. God bless you and the blessing rests on your house in Jesus' name. Now you want to make your home available as a home cell location? Can I see your hand as well? So that the blessing of God can rest upon your house and this church becomes, your house becomes a branch of this church where the power of God is working. Give the slips and the Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now proceeding we have I, don't, I, don't, I just want to be sure of our readiness for this, the two locations within the town this week. Church planting. Are we, are we set? We're meant to have one on Thursday and have one on Saturday. The information is not on the announcement, so I need the information. Now, we have, we are having a creativity fair. In our midst, are many people with unbelievable inventions. You saw the water light the other day. Several people have seen me personally with divers inventions that will blow your mind. Online things, products, and so forth and so on. One, the opportunity of the, of the church flock and fold globally. And probably the pop, I mean, people in our nation to know that there is grace that is coming. We have, a, we have one that they, they want to do a, a, I think it's a charging system well, let me not reveal their inventions so that somebody does not uh, but want to have that creativity fair within the next two, three weeks Okay, we're going to give a day like a Saturday at the um, garden area there where tents will be set, where people will present what they have done where the membership will be invited to just look at what people can, have done and then in case you need their services, you can look for them, right? The, the water lamp person will be there. Other inventors and creative people will be there. And so if you have a creative thing that we are not aware of, please register at the welfare desk outside there. There is a welfare desk outside beside the, the home church desk on this other side. You just register and let them know, this is my product, this is my handwork. They will give you details and so on. And then by the time we have enough of the people, it, it, it's inventions, it's creativity, work of hand. What you do that you did by yourself, that you originated, invented, or whatever it is, and want to let that down. You know, one of the greatest secrets of the Jewish community is that the Jewish bakery is the bakery of all the Jews. The Jewish bank is the bank of all the Jews. The, the, the Jewish hairdressing salon or, or the babbing shop is the babbing shop of all the Jews. So their money revolves among themselves and then they explode in millions and billions. It's a major secret. And it's important that we all we know that. That if your brother has invented something and he's doing this or that, uh, then it's, 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 it's a very great uh, access to that. So we are going to do that. And um, if you have anything like that, let us know. And when the time is set for the, for the uh, creative fair to happen, we'll announce it in church. You will take out time to be there. To be there and just see what people are doing. And then the Lord, it will be rowdy if we say it's on Sunday. But we'll do it within um, like a weekend so that you, we can all come and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I think we're also going to possibly even televise it live so that people can just watch everywhere and know that this kind of thing is going on. This one is doing this and this one is doing that and this one is doing that. How many of you are excited about that? You know, the devil doesn't care what you know how to do for as long as nobody is aware. He doesn't care what you can do. If nobody is aware, it's okay. But we are going to resist that devil and say you cannot, you cannot be great quietly. You cannot carry creativity and it's not aware. We want to make your vision visible. Stand up on your feet. It's going to be at no, at zero cost. So don't be afraid like, oh, maybe the pastor, the church will charge you for this or charge you for the zero. 
our, int our financial and any interest in it is zero. Completely zero. It's zero. It's zero. If anybody charge you anything, I will pay it for you. Right? So that should be made very clear. So it's not like, oh, are they looking for something from me? Nothing. It's what to add to you, not what to get from you. So let the word, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. A bigger, bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. The biggest clap and the loud most shout of praise. The only way in which the situation will change is if we have such an over-congested place and then we can review things. But as far as you know, there is no obligation to you for now. If the position changes, we'll let you know. But we are here to say nothing is expected from you. Now, you have your offerings. Stretch your hands. Father, bless the hand of every giver and let their offerings be multiplied in Jesus' precious name. We'll do that and quickly present our materials for impartation. Those watching online, Right, welfare distribution is still on today. All right, lift up your offerings. Father, multiply the harvest of every giver. Let the hands lifted never drop to bed. In Jesus' precious name. Pass the offerings quickly and once you have done celebrations, then you pick up your materials for impartation. Stand up on our feet right now, everywhere you, we are. Lift up your materials for impartation. But the most important thing that can happen to you today is a life surrender to Jesus. You have not given your life to Jesus. You know Jesus is not Lord over your life. You want today to mark a new day in your life. Pick up your Bibles. Pick up your bags. And step forward here. And let me pray for you. You want your sins forgiven. You want today to mark a new day for you. You are saying, Pastor, I, I, saw, the, I saw the miracles. I heard the preaching about uprightness and the fear of God giving me light and access and I want to hand over my life to Jesus. Quickly come at this count of 10. One. Quickly pick your Bibles, pick your bags. Two. Just a moment. We had people that were delivered from masturbation just now. Spirit, wife, and so on. There is a lifestyle, a habit you are not happy with. You know God is not happy with and you want to be free from this lifestyle, this habit. Also quickly, Rush to the frontier. God bless you. I'll give you the count of seven. One. Take me, Lord, and you me Lord. Two. As an instrument of life, let me be acceptable. Three. Let me be pleasing to you. That's one Four. reason. That's one reason of my life. And that is to live for Five. Quickly come forward, quickly come forward. And also you are here. You want to rededicate yourself to Jesus. You've come out like this before, but you want to do it again. Step forward and let's receive you. And then you are here for the first time. Also come forward, let's receive you. And you want to become a member of Dunamis Church. Come forward and let us receive you. While they are coming, lift up your materials of impartation. I speak upon whatever document 
whatever material you can, you can lift your phone alongside. Today, I declare the Lord shall command the blessing on the work of your hands and on all that you set your hand to do. Whatever is in your hand today, whatever blessing is required for what is in your hands, I declare they are released. That same prophecy of under the next seven days, Jehovah causing a creation, giving a manifestation, and doing something new in your life. I declare that prophecy fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Go forth, break forth, and return back with your testimony in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Between now and the sunset, get set for your testimony in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Shall the Lord say, Amen. 2024. And above only. Where is your place? And above only. God bless you. Celebrate the King of Kings and celebrate the Lord of Lords. And we we'll look forward to seeing you shortly. Celebrations, let's go. Those who came in late for the first service, you, you might do yourself good to wait for the second service. And those who came in for the second service, you wait for the service you came for. God bless you. Come forward. That's right. Go ahead. welcome you all today, those giving their lives to Christ, those here for the first time, those new members, counselors are with you. Please go ahead, talk with them, and God bless you all. If there's any question or anything you want us to know, let them know, and they will let us know. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Celebrations.
you're in for the second service, rise to your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. Lift up your voice this morning. They looked up to him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Lift up your voice. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for your faithfulness over us. Thank you for all you did in the first service. Thank you for what you're set to do in this service, Lord. Be thou glorified, Lord. For God is in the midst of us. She shall not be moved. Father, we ask that you refresh your presence over this service, O Lord. Saturate us once again, O Lord. Father, we ask that your glory or power will flood the glory dome hitting the ends of the earth in this service Lord in the name of Jesus we pray it's our impartation service look for and in verse 14 and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee and they went out of fame of him throughout all the region round about lift up your voice this morning Lord keep me testy for thy impartation that will transmogrify my life this morning thy impartation oh Lord that will change my life. Father, let me live this service, a better version of what I've been before now, Lord. Do something quick and powerful in my life on a whole new level, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you lift up your voice this morning and let's pray for God's servant. Lift up your voice, Father, we ask that you grant him intensity. Grant him fire in this second service, Lord. As he stands to declare your immutable counsel, Lord. Father, carry him on the wings of your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name will pray. Thank you, Abba. Be thou glorified. You believe the Lord has said us this morning. Give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. I know you came with testimonies. Please kindly rush to the glory and chance of pastor. is already positioned there to invest your testimonies and God bless you. Let's receive the praise him to take us further. Somebody excited to bring God's presence this morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on. Make it better. Give the Lord a shout of praise! Oh! Let's go! Aha!
You may be seated in your heavenly places. You're welcome to church. Praise God. It is testimony time. And we want to have the following comforts for their testimonies. Please give Jesus a big hand of praise as we receive Mrs. Gloria Unogu, Naomi Francis, Ogu Akatu, and Ayok Samuel. Again, Ayok Samuel, Ogu Akatu, Naomi Francis, and Mrs. Gloria Unogu. If you believe you are next in line for a testimony, your hand clap is the loudest. Celebrate God for his faithfulness in the lives of this beloved. I'd give a background as we expect Sister Gloria. She said, okay. Can we have Naomi? Okay, there, she's on that way. She said, her little baby. She woke up on one of those days and realized that baby became distressed. All of a sudden, baby began to choke and was foaming. And she beckoned on her husband to come and see what she is seeing. Husband reached out for a bottle of anointing oil because, like she said, death was written all over the baby. Please, what happened to your baby and what did God do? Praise God. My name is Gloria Unogu. On Friday, I was with my baby. He has uh, these little, little ratchets. Then I decided to take her to the hospital. When we went to the hospital, we came back. The baby was okay. He was not sick. He's not running temperature, nothing. Then suddenly I was breastfeeding. The baby started choking. Started choking, then I called my husband and come and see what is happening to the baby. Oh, before I could know, the baby started stretching his body. Foam was coming out of his mouth. I brought this baby to the hospital. My husband was starting at me that why would I take the baby to the market to get something when I was coming back to the hospital? Why don't I come straight home? Then you send somebody to get it for me. I said, you know, enter anywhere. I just start beside the road and get the stuff. He said, okay. I said, okay, let's rush the baby to the hospital. I don't want anything to happen to this baby. But I have gone through so much stress because of the baby. He said, I should bring anointing oil. I bring anointing. I took the Holy Communion. I gave the baby. And I gave the baby the anointing oil. He said, I should go inside. I bring his khaki so that we'll go to the hospital. Before I could go inside, to bring the khaki so that we'll go the, uh, to the hospital. The anointing that he gave the baby, the baby bounced back to life, the foam, everything dried up, like no medication, nothing. Everything was just fine like that. I just want to thank God. Baby is peaceful, resting on her father's chest there, and God has preserved her life. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise for life and divine intervention in that situation. In Jesus' name. Yes, your name, what God did for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Naomi Francis. What God do to me? This baby I am carrying, if you know the God of Donamis, and daddy and mommy dear, it will be another thing. Because 2021, I delivered my baby boy. I lost the baby. In 2022, I delivered my baby boy. I still lost the baby. Well, she said she lost two children. That was before she came here. 2021, lost a child. 2022, lost another child after delivery. Pastor devil. Yes. And then she located Dunamis in 2023. While she got here last year, in fact, God introduced her to this ministry while watching Dunamis television. And she saw the power of God at work here. Came here in 2023, and God blessed her again with a pregnancy and it wasn't without a fight, actually. She said, because at seven months of this pregnancy, baby stopped kicking. She came for a service. I believe it was a healing and deliverance service. And God 
gave a word through his servant and life was restored. She began to feel that baby kick in that service. She came to the front here and she was prayed for. This is the baby. And um, while it was about time to put forth this child, complications again at the point of delivery. But summary is the devil lost this time around. Baby is alive, mother is alive, and the testimony is in her hands. Give Jesus a big hand of prayer. Congratulations, madam. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Every evil cycle around your life, cycle of calamity and cycle of destruction, that cycle is broken right now. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a prayer. Yes, sir, your name and what God did for you. Morning, church. My name is Akatu Ogu. That has to do with the uh, letters that the man of God mentioned on the 13th of this month at the midnight uh, prayer. He mentioned the name that has to do with ATU. And Akatu has ATU in it. And uh, he say, he talked about pain on the neck. Before that time, I was having pains on my neck. And when he mentioned, he said the pain is gone. From that time, instantly, the pain left. And I am free of the pain now. He said he already talked with his doctor friend. Prescriptions were given to him on medications he was meant to take. That night, I think of April, somebody with a name that has an ATU in it. His name is Akatu, like you just heard, with a neck condition, precisely spot on. And after that declaration, pain returned back to hell. Today he's here pain-free and giving Jesus praise for Give that. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Give him the praise. Your name and what God did for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Ayok Samuel. For those of you who were here during the midweek service, a gentleman who was mute at the close of service that was prayed for, so I wanted him to speak by himself. On the 10th of April this year, me and my friend went to a beach in prison, Lekki. So when we went to a beach in Frison Lake, we went out. We said, we sit down close to the beach bar. After we sit down close to the beach bar, I said, I enter water. When I enter water, before you know, I cannot come out. Some of my people help me, carry me, come out. When I come out from the beach, then I cannot talk. From there, my ear, my mouth, my everything, I cannot talk. They try to talk to me from there, I cannot talk. From there, they said, carry me, come to my family here in Abuja. When they carry me come to my family here in Abuja, our sister that she's in Jos connected us to the dunamis. When she connected us to the dunamis, we come to the dunamis on Wednesday. Father, pray for us, pray for us. After that, Father, pray for us. He said, That's right. <laughs> Please let him go, let him go, let him go. I shout Jesus. When I shout Jesus, I cannot shout. He touched me. He said, I touch my tongue, I touch my tongue, I press my tongue. When he said I should shout another Jesus, I shout Jesus. Then I started talking. And he continued talking. <laughs> he said, obviously he encountered some spirits in that water he That's entered. Right. And some devils and became mute, couldn't say a word. Sister requested that he be imported to Abuja. And they brought him from Lagos to Abuja. In that service, like he just narrated, um, father asked him to <laughs> scream Jesus. Which he did. And from that day, restoration. God restored everything about his voice. Like you can see, he had just testified by himself. And the devil is back to the I beach. I wish we had the clip of that uh, midweek service. Because the um, pastor came to tell me that this man was brought from Lagos. Uh, he couldn't talk. He's mute. And he's not yet healed. I said, okay, he will talk now. And by the power of God, power of God hit him. And he talked on the spot. And God took the glory. Everything that the devil took from you today, I declare it return. All right, they are showing us the Wednesday service. He's my younger brother. He's the one who follows me. He came from Lagos. Yes, sir. He's talking now. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish we took it from the beginning. Sitting and looking like that. This ended went to beach. From there, he cannot talk. And who are you to do? He's my younger brother. He's the one following me. Let's he came from Lagos. Yes, sir. He's talking now. Amen. 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 <laughs> Stand on your feet and let us celebrate. Are you just sitting on me? Please come and go and hold the one. Tell me something. For these amazing testimonies again and again and again and again. You are worthy to be praised. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You are preserved in your going out and in your coming in. Anywhere you go, there are some marine spirits or demons who come upon your life. Your steps shall not be ordered in that direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Keep on inviting your friends and your loved ones. His sister invited him to the church. And that mutism, demonic oppression was casted out. Invite others. Let them come and let their lives be transformed. That woman kept on losing children until she got connected to this assembly. What she was telling us on the seat, this particular child came out with the legs. Bridge presentation that wasn't even properly delivered. And see, the baby is alive. Mother is alive. That can only be God. Every satanic spell on anybody's life for you not to achieve or fulfill certain things, that, are, that, that spell is terminated in the name of Jesus. You shall have your children. You shall marry. You shall succeed. You shall have what belongs to you. If you are a believer, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may, be seated. you may be seated. I'd like to welcome every one of us to this second service today. And I believe that you are living here with a blessing in Jesus' name. And we have so many people that have come in from other countries. Now, this is just smack dab in the middle of the month. There's no vigil. There's no special program. And yet we have... 15 nations here represented. Can you give Jesus a big clap of hand? Pastor, I see you from South Africa. You're welcome. <laughs> God bless you. So there are people are here from Cameroon, from Ethiopia, from Germany, from Ghana, from Grenada. That's from the Caribbeans all the way. From Malaysia, from South Africa, from Sweden, from Switzerland, from Togo, from Czech Republic, from Spain, from the United Kingdom, from the United States of America, and from Zimbabwe. Hallelujah! The earth is being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. And I'd like you to help me greet your neighbor and tell them where you came from. I'm from where? Tell us. Ch Chica? Not Chicago? From Wuye, from Metama, from Nyanya, from Maraba, wherever. Give Jesus a big clap of hands. You are all welcome. We are happy to have you in our midst, and we know that you are returning with your testimonies in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Online viewers, God bless you all as well. 
in Jesus' name. Our Seeds of Destiny today is titled, Love, a Key to Fruitful Giving. Um, I, I, I might want to summarize it in this service and encourage you to read all of it when you get back home. But we understand from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 3, uh, the Bible says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. We understand today that your giving outside of living a life of love and compassion and affection is more like wasted effort. God's servant said here today that this implies that even if you empty a bank account for the sake of giving for something, for whatever, and even if you give your body to be burnt and you have no love, it does not profit you anything. Your giving holds no value without love. Your giving attracts no profit without love. God's servant said, you must understand that this is a serious matter. Can you tell your neighbor, this is a serious matter? You may be a tither or a giver or a covenant practitioner, but if you have a problem with your spouse that you cannot resolve and some external person can't even resolve it, then all that giving you did profits you nothing. We see also that you are only wasting your time and your resources. You may be a foundational member somewhere and have given so much for a work, but if you keep malice with people, you have no profit from that giving that you have given. God's servant said that there are some people who make the practice of malice just the way people practice law. Many people enjoy malice practice the way lawyers enjoy legal practice. They are called malice practitioners, just as we have legal practitioners. These people enjoy a lifestyle of keeping malice. They live by it. They enjoy it. Please, beloved, refuse to be one of them because that is fruitless and waste, it's an, a wasteful lifestyle. Remember this, that your giving holds no value without love. Your giving attracts no profit without love. Two assignments, number one, make love a major priority of your life. Number two, let your sacrifices and your giving be powered and propelled by love. Ensure that you keep malice far from you. Keep bitterness and envy, grudges far from you. Don't look at somebody and be in envy of them. Celebrate what God is doing in their lives so that God can promote you to where you, are ought, you ought to be. And let your life be characterized by love. Somebody say, I hear. Please lift up your hands as you pray. Say after me, Lord, I ask that you deliver me from lovelessness and from loveless sacrifice and giving. Plant your love in my heart and let it be the basis of my giving. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. I believe that God has spoken a word to somebody. I know somebody in particular needed this word today. Tell your neighbor, I am a love practitioner. I am not a malice practitioner. I am a love practitioner. Just like we have legal practitioners. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We proceed this morning as we receive the ministry of the Asaphites. The Asaphites are the youth chapel choir. And they'll be ministering a medley of songs this morning. The medley is titled, One Word. All the songs they'll be ministering are songs that have been received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul and Ancher. As a singer and minister, I believe you'll be blessed. Let's receive them with a clap offering this morning.
Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. Because where everything else fails, your word can never fail. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Thank you, Master. Because of your word, it is well with our soul. In Jesus' precious name. Before you sit down, please help me welcome seven people to service. Tell them you are welcome and it is well with you. It is well. It is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. In the name of Jesus. It is well. It is well. It is well. In the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well. Satan lose. It is not fun to see such fun to see Satan lose. Jesus is a winner man. Jesus is a winner man. A winner man. A winner man. Jesus is a winner man. A winner man all the time. I am on the winning side. I am on the winning side. The winning side. The winning side. I am on the winning side. The winning side all the time. Winner man. Winner man. Winner man. Shout out praise. And be seated in the presence of the Lord. For it is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loud most amen. amen. Welcome everyone here this morning. Including everyone who has come from the various countries of the world represented. We appreciate you. We know you you will not return back the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the service this morning, in the first service, we looked at the subject titled, Accessing the Treasures of the Word. So in this service, we shall be looking at the second part of that message, Accessing the Treasures of the word of God. We read in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. The Bible says, Because in him, that is in Christ Jesus, are hid all the treasures, two, three rather, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ is the word. So in him, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid. In Psalm 119 verse 18, he said, Open down my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So the word of God is a depot of wonders, wondrous things. It's a depot of treasures. In Matthew 13 and in verse 52, the Bible said, Then said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed in the kingdom of God, of heaven, is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So the instructions of the word is a compendium of treasure. 
What is instruction from the Bible is treasure for life. Is treasure for life. Scripture is treasurable. Scripture is a minefield of treasure. But how do we access this treasure? In Isaiah 22 and in verse 11, we saw 29, 11, we saw a parable where he talked about the vision of it all is like the book. The words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read. And he said, I cannot for it is sealed. The book comes sealed. That is why what we access is called revelation because it's concealed. In Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 1, the Bible said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven or on earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. One of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And he continues. You see, I wept because no man was available to open the book. When the book is not opened, weeping continues. When the book is closed, mourning continues. Travail continues. People begin to continue to struggle. They continue to, 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 to be stressed out. Peter said, I've toiled all night. I, I caught nothing. But as I've received this word now, my toiling is over. I see somebody coming to the end of travail, coming to the end of toiling. And if you are the one, shout the loudest, say Amen. If I am to see the treasures of the book, what do I need to possess? How do I access this book? Number one, we looked at it and I'm not going to go through because of time. True spiritual hunger. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. We looked at that in the first service. Because of time, I might not go through all of it so please you can pick the message of it or even go on YouTube. You will find it there to look through. True spiritual hunger. Number two is true uprightness of life. The fear of God. An upright life. Godly life. Life of a man who fears God. That is the one that can see what he needs to see out of the book. Number three. It's through the art of meditation. Thinking the word. Ruminating the word. Digesting the word. Regurgitating the word. Gives us access to the treasures. Number four. It's through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the author of the book. When we ask for the help of the Spirit to show us what is in the book, praying in the Holy Ghost, making inquiries and asking, He will help us. Number five, it's true the climate of joy and praise. Depression is the enemy of revelation. Depression blocks the pathways of inspiration. Through the climate of joy, through the climate of praise, we can access revelation. 
We looked at those five in the first service. We have five more to look at. Number six, which is where we are starting from in this service, is true. The quality of meekness and humility. Meekness. God has very little business with the proud. The Bible said God resisted, resist the proud and gives grace to the humble. God has very, very little to do with the proud. In Psalm 25 and in verse 9, He said, the meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. The meek, not the proud, not the arrogant, not the haughty. Arrogance is the foundation for ignorance in the world of the spirit. When you agree to be arrogant, you have agreed to be ignorant spiritually. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth in his time. In Numbers chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible said now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Meekness is teachability. In meekness, you agree to be teachable. Meekness is the admission of ignorance. I admit that I don't know. You are ready and willing to be taught by anybody. Especially who knows more than you. Meekness. That meek Moses was the one that God gave the privilege to write the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. God gave him light because he saw that he was meek. James chapter 1 and in verse 19, James chapter 1, verse 24 rather, 21. Okay, let's start from verse 19 to 21. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. You know, meek people are swift to hear and they are slow to talk. Arrogant people talk all the time. They talk all the time. They talk, they are loquacious. Just keep talking all the time. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. And then verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The word is received only with the quality of meekness. You may have read one verse of scripture a hundred times. But there is something new you can see out of it every day. If you will approach it with meekness. If you will let God know, I, I am aware there is something here that I don't know yet. And you will be taught. Somebody say it loud, amen. True. The quality of meekness and humility. Number four, true specific request at the place of prayer. When you are specifically asking God to show you his word at the place of prayer, you get insight. In Psalm 119 and in verse 18, 
He said, open my eyes. The psalmist is praying that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You are coming before God and you are telling him, Father, open my eyes today. Let me see something out of your word that I have not seen before. Open my eyes today. Let me see something out of your word I haven't seen before. Specific request at the place of prayer. In Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3, he said, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you knew not, which thou knowest not. Which means you are there at the place of prayer with your Bible in your hand. Lord, there are things I don't know as I open this Bible. Show me things I have not known. Show me, open my eyes. How many of us know that you have gone, you may have gone through this Bible many times, but there are verses in this Bible that somebody will read and you say, I haven't seen that verse before. It has happened to me many times. I've gone through this Bible many times. Even right on this altar, somebody is leading prayer. Somebody is, 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 is doing something or the other. And I see a verse. I may have seen it together, but one that verse stood alone. I hadn't seen it before. I was preaching in Makodi some time ago. And the host minister said to me, these things are in the Bible, I never saw it. He said, oh, and if God does not open your eyes, you can't see it. So, he said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you things that are there that you did not know. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 all the way to verse 18, Paul the apostle began to pray for the saints in Ephesus. Wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He's praying for them. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and so on and so forth. He's saying, I am praying for you that God will open your eyes. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he said, verse 7, ask and it shall be given. Lord, I'm asking you to open, open me up to your word. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. I pray for somebody here today. God will open your eyes to see what you haven't seen before. In Jesus' precious name true specific request at the place of prayer. Number three, true the act of searching and studying. You search and you study. You arrive. At light through the act of the act of studying and searching in Second Timothy chapter two and in verse fifteen, it says, "Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Study. The escape from shame is study. Study so you are not ashamed. In John chapter 5 and in verse 39, John 5 and in verse 39, very explosive. It says, search the scriptures. For in them, literally it means in them, you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures. Search it. 
Somebody say a loud amen. amen. That was what the Christians in Berea did. In Acts chapter 17 verse 11, after Paul preached to them, the Bible said, look at verse 10, and then 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. To find, you must search. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. It is the glory of, the, of, of God to conceal a thing. But it is the honor of kings to search out the matter. The glory of God is to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Look at your neighbor say I will search it out. Say I will search the matter out. Say it, I say, I will search it out. How many of you at any time you have gone to search in your wardrobe or your cupboard something that was missing and suddenly you find something else that got lost some time ago you didn't know and you found it. And, the, and it happens most under the bed or under the, you just, you just, you just flash your torchlight and then you were looking for a pen that dropped but suddenly you realize that the comb was there. And you realize that something else was there. Because in the process of searching, you find even what you were not looking for. That is how it is with scripture. You can embark on a search. I am tired of falling sick all the time. Lord, I need the secret of divine health and strength and audacity and ruggedity and cacracarity. <laughs> Ooh, I need the secret and then you start with scripture health healing if you have a bible that has concordance you type health or you type healing or you type healed and then you are reading all of those and then you get messages that have been preached on divine healing look and leave heritage of health all those kind of things while you are listening to this, you are also going through the scripture. And as the light is coming, you are getting light from light. Somebody say light from light. There are times where you get revelation that the pastor did not preach. Out of what he said, you heard something. Something that applied to you. Something he did not say that the Holy Ghost made you to hear. You get the tape, you get the CD, you get the book. Lord, I am tired of begging and borrowing. I am hard working. I do my covenant obligations. I give tithes and offerings and so on. I can't still be begging and borrowing. What is the secret? And then you enter into the world and begin to search. See, every time you read a book, you get information. Every time you read the Bible and you read it well, you get revelation. See, information gives you education. Revelation gives you impartation. Bam. Did you hear what I said? Every time you read a book, you may get information. That is secular normal book. That information has educated you. You knew something you never knew before. But every time you see something out of the world, you got revelation. That revelation gives you impartation. Impartation means empowerment. You are empowered to function in that light. You are empowered to see the result that that revelation said you will see. Even as I am speaking now, 
that power is happening right now. In Ezekiel chapter 2 and in verse 2, he said, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. As I speak right now, I see the Spirit of God entering into somebody. If you are that one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. Say after me, information brings education. Revelation facilitates impartation. That's the difference. That is why nobody ever read a book and got healed because he read a literature book. But somebody read a, 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 a Christian book and got healed and got delivered because he encountered light and that light. Let me tell you a story. A woman was, I heard a story, I think it was about Mumford or so whose book, I think it was titled to face off with a miracle. She was sitting on a wheelchair and reading a book. I think the title was face off with a miracle. I heard it from Papa Yedipo. And she was reading the book. She kept reading. She's on the wheelchair. She kept, kept reading the book. Fired material. Revelation was being fired into her spirit. Light was coming. Suddenly, she said, wow. You mean that this is true? Hey, this is incredible. Only for us, her to realize that while screaming, she already stood from the wheelchair. And she's holding the book in her hand. She didn't know when she, she didn't realize when she stood up. Electricity was fired into her system by the light of that word. Oh, Mahashatatala. That is what I mean by revelation gives you impartation. I prophesy today, impartation is happening for somebody. If you are that one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. Something is changing in somebody's life today. A revolution is happening to somebody today. Give the Lord a turn around shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And so, if you are in a hurry throughout life, you are in a hurry. You won't be able to get much out of God. Half a day, a whole day, two, three days. You can decide, I want to go through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Somebody brought me his son, who was hooked on Indian hemp. I placed him on three, on three days fasting. Placed him on the word. Got him filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with tongues. At the end of the day, the taste died. Because something happened to him. You can take casual leave. From the office, not just to travel for holiday, but to sit with the word. Sitting with that word will produce for you what a thousand holidays may not produce. You can take casual leave, not just for, to travel for shopping, but to travel in, in the world for lighting. And that light you will get from the world can make you buy the shop you went to go to shop in. That light you will get from the world can make you become the owner of the shop you went to shop in. Through the act of searching and studying Number four is through the action of fasting and waiting on the Lord. There are times you wait for, on God for light. You wait on God for insight. So this is a combination. You can combine three things. You are combining the searching with the prayer and join, and join with, with the fasting. For example, for the next three days, I want to pray and I want to fast and I want to search for the secrets of the supernatural in ministry. That is, I am a pastor. I want to search the scripture. I want to search the word. I want to fast. I want to pray. 
I don't want to stand permanently and be apologizing on behalf of God. The reason why this and that cannot happen. You can do that. Those seven bishops who David the Edipus said, he had talked about supernatural supply. That is God meeting the needs of his people according to his riches in glory. But it was not a reality in his life. Because what you preach is different from the result you have. And the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to preach something you have no result in. That's the worst thing that can happen to anybody. You, you preach something you have no result in. You have no victory over, over the enemy and you are preaching victory over the enemy. So he said the more he preached, the more re reproachful he was. So he went on a three-day fast. Lord, what is the secret of kingdom prosperity, supernatural supplies? What is the secret? He got the book of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and read them with fasting for three days. At the end of three days, he got a light that exploded his mind. He said, I can't be poor. From that day, the year of 1983, this is 41 years now, he has seen, and he's seen supplies at the frequency of ease. We call it excess without stress. Without any form of stress. Without stress. Whatever needs to be done, there is enough resources to do it. Economy notwithstanding. Because my God shall supply all your needs. Not according to the economy of the nation. But according to the, his riches in glory. This thing was built... This place here was built during one of the worst recessions in this country. Dollar rate multiplied many times. It continued non-stop. Am I communicating at all? And, it, and God is no respecter of persons. You may be a pastor or a preacher. If you don't practice what you ask others to practice, they will practice it and get result. You will be without result. Except you turn yourself into a beggar. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Isaiah 58 verse 6. He said, it's not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. Then you break every yoke. Verse 8. When you do the fast, then shall your light break forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth. There are two things that a fasting will, should do. Number one is the supply of light. Number two is the release of health. A fast, a real fast. Your light shall break forth. You, you break forth in light. In the climate of the fast. When you need, when the prayer is not, has not solved it. When, when the other things haven't done. You add the fast. To say, Lord, show me this and show me that. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, God spoke when the people were fasting. In verse 2, they ministered to the Lord, they fasted, the Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost can sp speak to you in your heart and he can in your ears and can speak to you from the word. All we need is this, the voice of God. And the fast can do that. Now, in the first service, I asked people, I said, who do you think was the most prolific or the most lighted person in the New Testament, apart from Jesus Christ, had more insight, more revelation, more word, obviously and undoubtedly is Paul the Apostle. Undoubtedly is Paul the Apostle. Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Titus, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Jude, the whole book of Hebrews. This man wrote all of it, all. 
and, and they left the other, the other half of the New Testament for the other apostles. What was his secret? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18, we saw one secret right there in that verse. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. I fellowship with the Holy Spirit more than all of you. No wonder he wrote more than them. Now, another secret in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27. This man who was the man of light was also a man of fasting in weariness, painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, in, fast, in fastings often. This were his credentials in cold and nakedness where, where such confrontations met him. In fastings often. Paul the apostle fasted often and because of that kind of walk he was able to walk in light. Finally, number five, which is also number ten overall, is true. The walk of love. Through the walk of love. And this is love for God and love for man. The walk of love. The walk of love. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 10. He said, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. I have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. The things which God has revealed, prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Lovers of God are privileged custodians of insight from God. Lovers of God. There is a connection between love and light. To be in his love is to be in his light. Because God is love and he is also light. Somebody say amen. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the light of the world. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, God is love. So to walk in love is to walk in light. Somebody say it loud, amen. Walking in love is walking in light. Let me say this as I round off. Love for God is incomplete until there is love for man. Say that again. Love for God is incomplete until there is love for man. You cannot claim to love God and hate man. First John chapter 4 verse 20 to 21. If a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he claim to love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have we from him, that he, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody shout the Lord most amen. amen. I heard the story of the man whose wife, very, very dedicated in church, committed. But when the man says, Madam, do this or that, say, Satan pack your load and go. Satan pack. Husband is Satan. Husband 
is Satan. I think she was in the choir at that time. Not here. Not here, not here. Not this place. It was a story I heard. Sing with the voice of a mocking bird. But husband is Satan at home. Even if he's Satan, is that how to address him? Will you address Satan like that and he will change? If you, you claim to love God and you don't see any love I have for God, this is this, this, this madam here. She's the one to confirm it. This girl here, this girl here. She's the one to confirm it. This baby, this child, and her siblings, they are the ones to confirm it. The people who drive the drivers, the people who are, they are the people to confirm it. Whatever you are confirming by yourself is not confirmed. Your wife, your children, the people in the close proximity of your life, the love you have for God will flow on them. There are times I'm out of prayer and I'm hugging everybody and hugging everybody and everybody. And my wife said, please, just go back there and remain there a bit more so that you can maintain and come out with the maintenance of this climate. Love for God is trigger for light. And love for God is confirmed by love for man. Somebody say amen. amen. And can I tell you something? There can be no love without joy. Lovers are joyful. They are excited people. When you see a man in whose heart love flows, joy is also natural. Bitter people are depressed, two of us. Very depressed. They are bitter with everybody and they, they don't find any reason to laugh with. Even if they, they are laughing and they see somebody they are bitter against, the laughter is summarized. Galatians chapter 5. And in verse 23, you move from love. Start from verse 19, let's say. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Move to the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? From the flow of love, what is next? And with joy comes what? Stand up on your feet. Show me a man whose heart is loaded with love. You won't look far to find joy. And then with joy you will find the peace everywhere. That passes understanding. And of, and of course, joy is one of the things we saw in the first service that will also trigger light. Am I communicating? So love will make you see light. Love will make you walk in joy. And joy will also make you see light. Because to be excited is to be lighted. We say that in the first service. Beloved, when the devil wants to deprive you of access to light, access to revelation, he will cut you off from joy. He will put your joy under pressure. He will send the devil and his demonets to irritate, aggravate, frustrate you. But you must send that devil back to hell. And you tell the devil, I cannot hand over my destiny to you. Go ahead and you alone maintain your bitterness. But I shall be excited. And then, from joy, from love, you flow to joy. And from joy, you flow to light. I'm going to give you five minutes and we are going to celebrate God. You are going to tell the devil you can't tie me down. You can't hold me down. And I want you to forgive anyone you need to forgive. Clean your heart of every trace of bitterness. Clean your heart of every trace. Every trace. Every trace of depression. And move into joy. There was a conclusion we drew. And it remains the same. Can you read that conclusion for us? It is wisdom to apply one's life to that which is profitable. Depression is not profitable. Bitterness is not profitable. Prayerlessness is not profitable. Unrighteousness is never profitable. It is wisdom to apply 
your life. You know, the seed of destiny today already addressed this last point. Malice practitioners. Like the way you have medical practitioners. Legal practitioner. Whatever else. Accounting practitioner. This one is a malice. He derives joy from malice. You know there are people who will keep malice with people until they are dead. The person has died. They are still bitter. You know I heard the story of somebody. The, he was crying bitterly that somebody died. So they thought it was out of love. Very bitterly. He said, what is happening? He said, the man has died with my money. <laughs> he still owe me the pay. The pay. The person telling the truth, he said, okay, go and wake him up. Wake him up and collect your money. That is how life is. Don't walk in that realm. Free up your life. When people come to engage you in it, reject it. Don't be. Reject the in, 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 temptation to be invited into contention. Is somebody doing that today? Are you going to celebrate for the next five minutes? Are you going to celebrate for the next five minutes? Walk to seven people and tell them, I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. You are going to celebrate. You are going to celebrate. Now, remain standing and listen to this word. In the first service, I received, I mean, I, I came with a word actually for service. And that was Psalm 104 in verse 30. Psalm 104 and in verse 30. The Bible said, Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. I told them, I said, leave the scripture there. Maybe you can put it on, the, on one side of the screen. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. And they are created. So God is still renewing the face of the earth through creation. That creation did not happen once and for all at the beginning. He still creates when there is a need for creation. I follow what I'm saying here today. He, still cre he hasn't lost his creation, his creation ability. He has not lost his creativity. He sends his spirit. You dig a pond in the wilderness or desert somewhere. Just dig a pond. And all of a sudden, you come after a few days or so, you see life inside the pond where you put, you, you, you didn't put any life inside it. It, it, it. Life came on the spot. One day I saw a little documentary. I think it was Kalahari Desert. After about years of drought, the rain fell a little. Like they say in Nigeria, oh boy. Vegetation started shooting out on the spot. Toads and all manner of things started just rushing from wherever they had been. Look at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Wine was created. Look at the lake of Gennesaret. After all night, no fishes. To me, either Jesus created the fishes or accelerated the growth process of the tadpoles or, and the fingerlings overnight, just on the spot. The little one that couldn't be caught by the net. It was all still creation. Until the net break, God can still create if the kidney is damaged, the liver is damaged, he sends his whoa, the pancreas and they are created. A new prostate, new fallopian tubes, new ovaries, and they are created. This is your word. Under the next seven days, God will do a new thing. In somebody's life, 
in somebody's life a work of creation, a work of a new beginning. You will do something new. Somebody say hallelujah. Pastor, where is baby praise? Did you come with praise? Where is she? Remain standing, people. Something new. I said in the first service, the position that Joseph occupied did not exist. Before Joseph, Egypt had no prime minister position. I don't know if they had after Joseph, but it was created. How are you? How has she been since that day? She's been the one cooking the food. Eating more than you know. No, she has to recover her weight. She has to recover her weight. She was a, she is a university student, afflicted by the enemy, became mute, and became everything. Began to lose weight, no eating, nothing. The healing and deliverance service, God delivered her. They went, and then there seemed to be a relapse. Where well, on and off, on and off, just complete mutism, no talk to nobody, no, no response, nothing. Till this few days ago, day before yesterday, they came to, my, to the office. And that devil was arrested, checked back to her. And then she began to talk. It's as if somebody that was brought from a realm who is wondering what, what happened. She began to speak and celebrate. And I told her that they should be in church for the next two, three or four weeks. I can't remember. So that that devil will return back to hell forever. Praise, congratulations. Are you happy? I'm happy, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. The Lord will perfect his purpose in your life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Under the next seven days, is there somebody trusting God at least for one thing new? Something new, a new beginning. I already see God touching the kidney of somebody on the right. Whether you are here live or you are watching, I see God touching somebody's prostate, somebody's fallopian tubes and ovaries. And the uh, Mahasha, female reproductive system, the pancreas, anything in your body, in your life that needs to be created, Jehovah shall create it. In the course of this dance and this celebration, something will happen. Five minutes of joy, of excitement, of celebration that will break you into light. Can you help me walk to seven people? Tell them I want to celebrate, I want to praise God. Let's go. Creator of the universe, what can you do? Celebrate, people! What can you do, Jesus? You are the name of both hey. What can you say? What can you say, Jesus?
Lift your two hands and receive what God has for you for the new beginning. Lift your hands high up everywhere you are. What He has for you, this new thing.
your hands everywhere you are. I believe that God has something for you. A new beginning within this week. Within the next seven days. A new thing. A new thing. A creation. Delayed expectation relief. In every form of pain, affliction or whatever is wrong with you, cleared out. Above all, access to light and insight. Lift your hands when I say the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. According to what Instruction we received in the first service. You place your hand on yourself and scream and receive. A new beginning, a new thing. Insight, light. Father, let it be. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. us in Jesus name. Amen. Lift your hands and give him the praise as we take going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. God touched you. Step forward here. There's a groin pain on the right side of the groin that somebody came here with like a testicular issue. God is healing you and afflictions that you came in your body. Check yourself. Divine encounters and something new dropped on you. Step forward and let's hear what God did. Celebrate and let's go. Going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. We go going up to the high places we going up to the high places. We going up to the high places to get the devil kings down. Everybody sing, going up to the high places. Everybody sing, going up to the high places. Everybody sing. seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. 
Amen. Well, while they take the testimonies, um, I want to let you know that you are in a very, very exciting season. The earth being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. This evening, at the command of the day prayers, we shall be uprooting enemy plantings. Whatever is planted around you that my Father in heaven has not planted, it shall be uprooted tonight. In Jesus' name. Tuesday healing service, explosive time. Wednesday, we'll be having a time summarizing and rounding off the subject of the word in the month of April. Friday is worship, word, and wonders night for the month of April. Give the Lord a big clap. The theme is at thy wall that is breaking through by the power of the word. And it's also a special commanding the day midnight prayer night. Everyone who is watching around the world, how I wish I can be there physically. This is your opportunity. Ensure you are there. Saturday morning, we are at the homes. I mean, out on the street evangelizing. Saturday evening, we are back to the home churches to experience the power of God. How many of us are members of the home cell? Can I see your hand? Wave it. Excellent. How many of us have given our homes as home cell locations? God bless you. When you give your home as a home cell location, it means that your house is now a branch of the church. How many of us, you have not given your home? Or rather, you are not yet a member of the home cell. You would like to be. Can I see your hand up? You are not yet a member of the home cell. All right. Hands are lifted everywhere. Ushers, all the way to the back. In the front here. Frontier hands are all lifted everywhere. That's right. You fill the form and let us know. Indicate where you live, your area, um, at the home church desk outside. We'll pick up that form. Or you can fill it actually and give to an usher who will help us to help you to submit it so you can be placed in a home that is near you. God bless you in Jesus' name. And now, how many of us want to make our homes available? That's the home church desk there. God bless you again. He wants to be a member and also a home church. Make his home available for home church. Hands lit right in front here. Don't let people keep their hands up too far. That's right. It's right there with you. Yes, please. The meaning of that is that your house becomes a branch of the church and the anointing here will move right there. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout the loudest amen. amen. Somebody shout the Lord most amen. amen. One of the things that we have seen God do, do in our church is to raise people onto high levels of excellence. It will interest you to know that we have various categories of people in this church you may not know. Mega property, some of the number one in terms of products but many of us are not aware the recently opened hospitality industry which I can say is one of the foremost currently having the patronage of leaders from nations of the world is rooted to this altar the other day a young man manufactured light I used that light about three days ago Friday. Friday. I use the light. It's, that's, that water light. That is water salt is powering light. And he said it can last for 60 days. 70 days. After 70 days, change the water, add more salt. Ola, ola. What, 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 what is light waiting for? No kerosene, no petrol, no charging. So we have different categories of these people. We, de we therefore decided, the Bible said the city set on a hill should not be hid. To make the vision to be visible, we are having a creativity fair. Let the church and the world know. Give the Lord a praise. How many of you know that 99% of the inventions on the earth came from anointed minds from the church. 99. Michael Faraday. Newton. 
Heinz, all of them. They are an aesthetic man, they are an obstetrics and gynecology man. All of them. They are all anointed minds. So, if you have an invention, you have a creativity, you have something novel, something that will impact people's lives, please register at the welfare desk right there. The welfare desk is opposite, is on the other side of the home church desk. I have a product, I have this and I have that. We are going to organize that fair within the next two, three weeks. It's going to hold in the garden. Tens, canopies. And then, you just showcase what you do. Let the brethren know that this is what you do. Maybe the brethren may be, may be occupying a particular uh, mega uh, establishment that may have more massive need of what you are producing. One of our people is producing a phone charger. One of the people here. I'll find out what that one uses, whether it's water or something. That is, you can charge your phone permanently. I think many Nigerians will like that one. I don't know the extent to which phone charging have disrupted our lights here. Plenty. By the time people see that, before you know it, they are plugging their phone. So, something like that is coming up and others like that. So, register right there. And then, when the day comes, we'll let you know. I will announce to the church, please, when the announcement comes, just make sure you go, you go there and see what the brethren are doing. Encourage them. Whether you have the need for, for what they are doing or whatever it is, just encourage them. I believe that God is about to rewrite the history of our nation and our continent because of what God will do through the church. I believe it's a new day. Shall the Lord say amen. Amen. Yes, go ahead and let's know. What's up. Sir, our brother had encounters upon encounters as that worship was going on he saw restorations um things were being you said things were being given to people or being restored restorations were taking place and it came forth congratulations and that restoration begins with you in jesus precious name Next question. Sure. Our brother said three days ago he woke up from sleep and his left ear became totally deaf. Couldn't wow. hear a word in that wow. ear. He trusted God in the first service. The ear remained the same. But in this second service, at a shout of I receive, it popped open. Wow. Yeah. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Everything that is blocked or closed in your life, I declare they are open. Jesus name. Our sister was diagnosed of having a fatty liver which um, um, resulted in, in pain in her, in, her, in her liver. So when he came in the morning and daddy prayed for her, she went back and the pain disappeared. Party liver, you came with your daughter who testified. Yeah, and oh, wow, and I prayed for both of you. Party liver is gone. Give the Lord the praise. Command the liver architecture to return back to normal. Jesus, precious name, and you are whole. Yes. Sister says she had, she has had pains on her both knees for a while now. She came to church with that general body weakness, but at the shout of I receive also, God touched those knees and pains are gone. Congratulations. In Jesus' name, remain whole in Jesus' name. This little baby, come. She's next. Says she had pains on her right ankle, made it impossible for her to walk without that pain. And then at the shout of I receive, she said God touched her ankle and she's fine. And you are fine now. And you'll be able to walk well with this, your guy, Shona. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Be well, remain well in Jesus' name. Amen. So this young man, he, he, I, we don't know who sent him. He went for a vigil somewhere. And in the course of the vigil, somebody laid hands on him. He was angry afterwards and like challenged the person, why did you lay hands on me? He went back home and that night he dreamt and was molested in the dream. And he woke up in that depression, in that state, and came into the church this morning. And I think, is it this morning that you saw the revelation of you lay hands on him to unlay what was laid on What are you him? telling me? Power of the Holy Ghost. Be free in the name of Jesus. Every deposit on your life that is not of God, I declare them deleted right now. What happened to my friend? Emmanuel woke up with pain on his neck. But after the prayers, he told his mom, Mommy, my neck is free. Pain on his neck? Yes, sir. Okay. Emmanuel, you are free. And the pain returned back to hell forever in Jesus' name. 
Give the Lord a praise. And I like this powerful bow tie. Emmanuel, when I grow up, I like to wear a tie like this. Give the Lord a praise. Brother, I cannot care with an excruciating pain on his waist. Couldn't bend, couldn't do anything. But at the cost of the service, God's servant was... Bend and do what you couldn't do before. Declaring brutally. Now he can bend, he can jump. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. We have several other testifiers out there. And we might not be able to take all of, of them right now. You have one more. So, Sister Ogechi has been molested by a spirit husband for several years. But she said during the prayer, she saw the man run out of him. Congratulations. Out of her, rather. Lift your hands. That devil of molestation, back to hell. Your freedom is established. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for dementia that is healed from this man. In Jesus' name. Or oh, something got a, came out from his eye. He heard. In Jesus' name. Celebrate celebrations as they return back to their seat. Aye, God has given me victory. Aye. Lord, a big clap and a shout of praise. You came in here this morning in need of surrender to Jesus. All right, let's do it together. Stretch your two hands in front of you, people. I pray for your hands and I ask that your harvest will look for you from the north, the south, the east, the west. What is yours? No devil shall keep back in Jesus' name. While we take our offerings, there is a set of people. Your highest offering is your life. Your life given to God is your offering. All right, you can still give cash if you want, but. What God wants above every other thing more than your money is your life. Surrender to him. Anywhere you are seated. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven. You want today to mark a new day for you. Stand up on your feet. Carry your Bibles. Carry your bags. And quickly rush to the front here. I'll give you the count of 10. You're on the gallery. Don't let the distance stop you. Rush to the front and let's receive you. One. Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to do your will. Lord, I want to live for you. I have just one life to live, and it must glorify you. I am yours, the Lord, and time, and for all eternity. Two. I have just one life to live. Three. And it must glorify you. I am yours, the Lord, and time. Four. Everywhere you are, quickly, again, pick your Bibles and bags and step forward. You are bound by an addiction. You want the addiction broken. Also, step forward and let's receive you. You are bound by a lifestyle. You want the lifestyle broken. Step forward and let us receive you. There is something that you feel you need God to help you with. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You have done this before. But you want to do it again because you know you are not living right. Stand up on your feet and come forward. Also, if you are here for the first time, Dunamis Church will be glad to receive you also on another, on another room. And then, of course, those who want to become full members of the church. You've been coming for a while, but you have not done our membership. I also wanted to let you know that we have online membership class that is ongoing. All right. Pick your Bible and bags and step forward and let's receive you. Let's go. Take me, Lord, and use me, Lord, as an instrument of love. Let me be a Two. Let me Keep be coming. Busy. Three. All I have is yours to lose. Where you send me, I will go. It's a long go I have Come to me, it's a leave. Lord, I want to know. Lord, I want to know. Three. Lord, I want Four. to see. Lord, I want to do you will. I want to live for you. Lord, I, want I have to just, I, I have just one life. life to me. For all eternity, I have just one life. I have just one life. 
Lift up your hands, your offerings. Father, multiply to every giver there. See that they are sowing. Harvest on every side in Jesus' name. Pass it on, drop your offerings. And once you have dropped it, you can stand up with your materials for impartation. And then lift them up. Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to know. Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to, Lord, I want to see you. Anything you want God to bless for you. You are expecting a call. You are expecting an email. You are expecting an invitation for an interview. You are expecting an, a transaction notification. You can lift up your points of contact including your phones. And let's pray. Those in the front, we welcome you. We are happy that you came. We believe that it's a new day for you. I prophesy upon every material lifted up. Right now. In the name that is above every name. Jesus, the resurrected Lord. The same God who breathed on the effort of Peter when he said, I have toiled all night, I caught nothing. That same God who made the rod of Moses become an instrument of deliverance? I speak upon what documents and materials are in your hands. Under seven days, God will do a new thing. God give you a testimony. God do a new thing with what is in your hands. In the name of Jesus. I decree a new season. I decree a change of story. I decree a change of story. I decree a testimony, your testimony of divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. Father, everyone who came in here for the first time, before these days are out, give them a change of story as well. And so you go forth and you return back with your testimonies. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name and 2024, above only, where is your place? And above only, God bless you. Those in the front, please remain. Our counselors will speak with you briefly and then we shall see you. The rest, shake the hands of seven people and tell them congratulations for a new thing in your life. Congratulations for a new thing that is happening in your life. Celebrations, Father. <laughs>
coming to our church for the first time, those giving their life to Christ, those coming as members, and those coming for the first time. We are happy to have you. We know your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Our counselors are going to speak with you briefly. Please, if you have any question, you ask them. If you have any need for us to see, let them know, and they will let us know. Want to see you again and again. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please proceed. Thank you.